And welcome back. Our coverage continues from the Johnson Space Center here in Houston, Texas, the state of Texas. For obvious reasons, a very sad place this Sunday. It is also the scene of an investigation, specifically evidence gathering. We heard there some of the voices of this catastrophic tragedy yesterday. Today, a lot of the concentration has to do with, quite literally, piecing together the shuttle Columbia, notifying people in cities and towns, wooded areas, rural areas, across several hundred square miles that they may have a vital piece of this investigation right near them and not know it. As you know, we're going to go live to Hemp Hill, Texas, when the news conference at the command center of the debris search area gets underway. We have more from NBC News correspondent Ashley Banfield. It's a very gray day here in Nacogdoches, Texas. Stark contrast to yesterday, a clear blue sky and all sorts of promise. Today, though, a massive task ahead of everybody here. Investigators, police, NASA, the FBI, all sorts of different agencies responding to this disaster and responding to so many different sites as well. With a debris field that's now 900 square miles, you can imagine how difficult this task is going to be to try to locate, recover, and analyze all of the different pieces and sizes of pieces of debris from the, uh, from the space shuttle disaster. Uh, we can tell you that there are 800 sites alone just in Nacogdoches County where I am. This is by all means the epicenter of where most of the debris did fall. But 800 sites doesn't even incorporate the number of pieces per site. So there's inc an incredible recovery effort, mar marking, mapping, GPS locators to just try to get a handle on all of this. So far in just uh, over 24 hours though, they have been able to figure out at least the trajectory path through this county from the northwest down to the southeast. So at least they can map out where they need to go from here and try and get some investigative uh, answers through that means. To that end, we've also had some confirmation of human remains found here in Nacogdoches. We had heard already that there had been remains found to the east of us, but now confirmation, although no specifics being given by the sheriff, as to human remains here in, uh, in Nacogdoches uh, County. Um, we also know that some of the debris that's been picked up has been more like uh, personal effects, uh, a patch from the, um, the uh, flight suit of one of the members on board the shuttle. There's a lot of concern about the kids coming back to school in this county as well and neighboring counties. Tomorrow's Monday morning, kids will be going back to these rural schools and who knows what kind of debris may be lying right now in those schoolyards. So there's a big concerted effort in this area to get those schoolyards clear to make sure that, number one, debris is found, not tampered with and damaged in terms of the investigation. And then, of course, the kids aren't injured by the toxicity that is reported to uh, be part of this problem as well. The memorials that have been building up all over the nation are evident here in Nacogdoches as well. Just behind me is one of the larger pieces of debris in this bank parking lot. It's only three by three, but it's just about the most indicative kind of image you can get out of this disaster. There's so many of these and they're so scattered that it's just hard to get an idea of what the disaster looks like. But the, uh, the memorials that have uh, sort of shown up here, candles and flags, notes and flowers, uh, we've seen this so many times before. We've seen tears, people coming here, signs, our prayers are with you, the astronauts. The sheriff has said this is such a big task, they can't even post the number of people to guard these sites anymore to make sure that they're not tampered with. Now it's just hoping on the uh, goodwill of uh, citizens to report them and not tamper mess with them as well. Quickly, on the logistics of it, FEMA is coordinating this entire search and recovery. The Environmental Protection Agency is responsible for the eventual cleanup of this. As far as the investigation goes, two-pronged. Number one, NASA. Number two, the military. And. Um, we can also tell you that the media has converged on this area, coming from as far away, in fact, as Japan. I'm Ashley Banfield in Nacogdoches. Back to you. Ashley, thank you for that report. At this point, we are joined by a gentleman who has been with us uh, on this topic in the past, uh, Professor Richard Berenson of American University, former head of the astronomy department there. He has been of counsel on the space program and space-related matters uh, in various capacities in the past. Uh, Professor, uh, I'd like to continue a conversation we've had uh, kind of stringing along among several our guests today. Is there a possibility that in the collective wisdom of those who fund the space program and carry it out that th there's a finite future for the notion of an orbitable, orbital uh, lander, a reusable craft just as uh, Gemini had its time and Apollo had its time? Oh, there's going to be many questions raised. There will be congressional inquiries. But I think the space shuttle's in place for some time. 
It was designed to be in place, and it, and it can continue. The space station is up. It costs a great deal of money, more than it was supposed to cost, probably more than it should have cost, and the scientific uh, benefits of it are now being questioned. But the real issue is what is the long-term vision for NASA? And I think there are plans actually in place, and they will be enunciated. Uh, do you, can you uh, open the window at all on any of those? Well, yes, I can, Brian. Back uh, 15 years ago, I was on the NASA Exploration Advisory Task Force, which was set up under uh, President Bush, the father. And we laid out a number of plans and rationales for NASA. As you know, NASA got going, really, as a response to the Soviet Union during the Cold War, Sputnik 1. And that right. gave a real rationale for the landing on the moon. And there was a genuine space race. Since then, there have been the whole array of robotic missions. Now, the human spaceflight has become somewhat routine in a way. I hate to say that in this tragic time, but around and around the world we go, and you raise the issue of, is it inspiring to this generation? What NASA needs is a dream, a vision, a goal, something that ignites the imagination of young people, which drives the technology that's useful to the country. President Bush, the father, on the 20th anniversary of the Apollo landing, stated that this nation would commit itself to return to the moon, this time to stay, and then to go on and send human beings to Mars, and to do so by the 50th anniversary of the Apollo landing. And I would not be surprised, given all of the pressures on the current president and administration of Iraq, North Korea, the economy, and all the rest, that somewhere down the road, you're going to find not that NASA's cut back or abolished, but there's a bolder and grander and a longer term vision. All right, let me play devil's advocate, American taxpayer. Uh, I know that most of the technology we enjoy from car dashboards to home computers to uh, see-through high-strength plastic is thanks to the developments from the space program. However, I'm going to have to see what it's going to get me to continue to go to Mars to colonize the moon. And how do you answer that? Well, oh, those are absolutely fair questions. You might add to that the safety of the astronauts. We just saw the disaster right here on Earth. We'd have to ensure their safety in a weightless condition and the radiation exposure of space. As for the utility, you might have added television and cable and Internet and a host of other things. I think that NASA has to make its case. It should not be given a free ride. And as for the country and its priorities and its dollars, and, of course, tax uh, cuts as well, uh, it can make its case, and I believe that it best makes its case by meshing with these other needs, that we are developing technologies that are useful to all Americans in their day-to-day -day lives, their commercial lives, as well as to the national defense. It doesn't fall uh, absolutely neatly into a category like guns uh, or butter uh, because of the benefits society has derived, and there's no disputing that we are a better country. Our quality of life is higher today because of the convenience and the science that came out of the space program. I guess people have a hard time believing that there could still be as sharp a learning curve, as sharp a benefit curve under a, the development of a mission to Mars as there could have been the Apollo series. Well, you're absolutely right in raising that, and that's why it'll be a very hot debate. Uh, I was asked by NASA to actually write this up. I found it very challenging. But you do need to emphasize the role of education. As you know, with the death of Krista McAuliffe, the teacher in space program was put on hold. Then Barbara Morgan, who was the number two person, was to fly in the schedule for this fall. That may now well be put on hold. I don't know. But since NASA announced the renewal of this program just weeks ago, thousands of applicants have come in, which suggests to me but this nation, the teachers, the parents, the school children, want education to be lifted high, both figuratively and metaphorically. And I believe that NASA and its endeavors can be at the very heart of that. This is fundamentally a scientific and technological nation. A few years ago, Greenspan said that was what was driving the American economy during its boom years. We're about possibly to be in a military conflict. If so, we are relying on our technology. Much of the education that comes that makes that possible are people that are inspired not to go into space necessarily, but to pursue technical scientific careers or at least be knowledgeable about it. 
Professor Richard Berenson, interesting as always. Thank you very much for joining us from Capitol Hill this Sunday. My pleasure. We're going to take a break here. When we come back, we will take an up-close look at the scope of the loss, the human toll, six of America's best and brightest, and a national hero from the state of Israel. NBC News live coverage continues from the Johnson Center.